really want to hear about it, the first thing you'll probably want to know is where I was born, who my childhood was, and all that stuff. But I don't feel like going into it. Where I want to start telling is the day I left Pensy Prep. They kicked me out. I wasn't supposed to come back over Christmas break on account of I was flunking four subjects and not applying myself at all. Anyway, it was December and all, and it was cold as a witch's tea, especially on top of that stupid hill. I don't even know what I was running for. I guess I just felt like it. After I got across the road, I sort of felt like I was disappearing. I was feeling lonely, and I got this crazy idea. I took out my wallet and started looking for this piece of paper I got from a guy at a party last summer. It was the phone number of this girl that wouldn't mind doing it once in a while. Anyway, I gave her a buzz. I took my lucky break and I broke it in two Put on my worried shoes My high, high worried shoes Took me so many miles and they never wore out How do you do? You the kid from the phone? Yeah, why don't you come in? I was suave. Can I offer you a drink? No. Well, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Jim Steele. How old are you? 22. Sure. Why, how old are you? Old enough to know better. I was getting more nonchalant as it went along. She looked my age, and obviously had no manners. That felt pretty peculiar when she did that. People are supposed to feel sexy when someone comes on to you. I didn't feel sexy. I just felt more depressed than sexy. So what's your name? Sunny. Let's go, hey? Don't you want to talk a little bit? Talk? What do you want to talk about? I don't know, I thought you might want to chat or something. She looked impatient and kept tapping her foot. If you're gonna talk, do it. I got things to do. I couldn't think of anything to talk about, though. I thought about asking her about how she became a prostitute doll, but I was scared to ask her. She probably wouldn't have told me anyway. So where are you from? Hollywood. Hey, do you got a hanger I can hang my jacket on? Yeah. It felt good to actually do something. As I hung up the coat, it sort of made me feel sad to think about her going to buy it and no one there knowing that she was going to wear it to be a prostitute. The salesman probably thought she was just a regular girl. It made me feel sad as hell. I don't know why, though. So do you work every night? Yes. What do you do during the days? Sleep, go to the shows. Look, let's go. I haven't got all day. Listen, I just don't feel like myself today. I'll still pay you and everything. What's the matter? I don't know. I just got an operation done. Oh yeah? Where? I'm not what you call it, my clavicord. She made me so nervous, so I just kept lying my head off. You're cute. I'm still recuperating from my operation, you know. Listen, when you called me, you woke me up, so if you think that I said I'm that would pay you. How much is it? It's fifty. Here's twenty. It's fifty. That's all you're getting. 
Take your sweater and get out of here. You're gonna be hearing from me. The thing was, I didn't feel like doing it when I felt more depressed than sexy. I just kept thinking about the jacket and how this girl just made me sad. Besides, I don't think I could ever do it with a girl like this. So boring and phony. I damn near gave my kid sister Phoebe a buzz. I certainly felt like talking to her on the phone. Somebody with a sense of humor and all. But I couldn't take a chance on giving her a buzz because she was only a little kid and wouldn't have been up, let alone anywhere near the phone. I thought of maybe hanging up if my parents answered, but that wouldn't have worked either. They know it was me. My mother always knows it's me. She's psychic. I got all ready and went down to the bar to see what was going on and have a drink. I thought what I'd do was, I'd pretend I was one of those deaf mutes. That way I wouldn't have to have any stupid, useless conversation with anybody. If anybody wanted to tell me something, they'd have to write it on a piece of paper and shove it over to me. they get bored as hell doing that after a while, and I'd be through with having conversations for the rest of my life. A lot of schools were home for vacation already, and there were about a million girls sitting, standing, and waiting for their dates to show up. It was really nice sightseeing, if you know what I mean. In a way, it was sort of depressing, too, because you kept wondering what the hell would happen to all of them. You figured most of them would probably marry dopey guys. Christmas sort of annoys me sometimes. All the decorations, all the stupid songs. In the first place, I'm sort of an atheist. I like Jesus and all, but I don't care too much for most of the other stuff in the Bible. If you want to know the truth, the guy I like best in the Bible, next to Jesus, was the lunatic and all. The guy that lived in the tombs and kept cutting himself with the stones. That poor bastard. I kept picturing all these little kids playing some game in this big field of rye. Thousands of little kids, and nobody's around. Nobody big, I mean, except me. And I'm standing on the edge of some crazy cliff. What I have to do, I have to catch everybody if they start to go over the cliff. I mean, if they're running and they don't look where they're going, I have to come out of somewhere and catch them. That's all I do all day. I just be the catcher in the rye and all. I know it's crazy, but that's the only thing I really like to be. I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy, crazy. Lost 12 hours of my day, but it's okay. Just black it out. Lost 12 hours of my day. Go.